What is up, Janksters? It's your boy, Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and we have another edition of the Overthinking MTG podcast. In this one, I want to discuss Spark Rupture. This is an enchantment from March of the Machine, the Aftermath, that impacts Planeswalkers in a way that is a little different from ways that we've seen in the past, and I honestly think it's going to be a very interesting um, piece of tech in, a, in, in any meta where Planeswalkers are very common. Uh, so Spark Rupture is an enchantment for two and a white. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, sweet. Each Planeswalker with one or more loyalty counters on it loses all abilities and is a creature with power and toughness each equal to the number of loyalty counters on it. So if you have a Wandering Emperor um, in your hand, say, uh, it immediately upon entering the battlefield would become a 4-4 creature. So having a 4-4 creature with flash in your hand is not bad. However, that is not as good as the Wandering Emperor <laughs> of, in her normal form. Um, it, actually, in, I realize in some cases, depending on what they're attacking with, it could do the effectively the same job. So that's an interesting case. But all the same, um, this is interesting. The The fact that it strips all the abilities off of the Planeswalker is very important. That's a big deal because all of the loyalty abilities, well, they're abilities. So all of them get stripped away by virtue of this ability or this effect on the board. So your opponent's Planeswalkers, for as long as Spark Rupture is here, they just don't work they're all turned off effectively. Now, the opponent gets vanilla creatures as a result of this. So, okay, if you have like, you know, a Tyvar or something on three loyalty, oh, you have a three, three. Okay, that's, it's not nothing, but compared to the synergistic turn over turn, like value that you were getting off that Planeswalker, like this is a pale image, you know, the, the a vanilla creature is not the reason you put that card in your deck. Um, so I think in decks that feature Planeswalkers heavily, this card is going to be incredibly powerful. I also think this is a big deal uh, because right now in standard, I know I have gone up against uh, mono white decks recently, uh, very, a lot of <laughs> mono white decks recently that um, use Planeswalkers as their primary finishers or one of their primary finishers where they just crush you with advantage and come out the other side with an eternal wander on the battlefield and that's that. You know, so like I've wiped everything you had possibly twice and I'm just gonna have this wanderer online and she's just gonna keep pumping out samurai and you're trying to draw a card that can answer the samurai every single turn. Meanwhile, there's just gonna be another one coming. So it's inevitably going to overwhelm you. Um, that is a play pattern that we see a lot in, in standard. Um, it, it's just, it's a common setup right now. With cards like Sunfall and White Sun's Twilight and Farewell, um, it's very easy to set something like that up. We also have Bank Buster drawing everybody cards. So, you know, th that kind of a setup is very, very viable. Additionally, I've also seen like Demir and Esper lists that are running heavy control, heavy control, where they'll counter and kill everything you got. And then they will stick a an Eternal Wanderer or a Teferi Temporal Pilgrim and just outvalue you in the end. Because it's one of those things, if you're doing one for one exchanges with your opponent, and both of you run out of gas at the same time, but you have a Planeswalker on the field, you're probably gonna win that game. You know, um, it's the amount of benefit the Planeswalkers give you is absolutely massive. This, by existing on the battlefield, shuts that down. Additionally, it can trips when it enters. So if you're in a situation where ETB effects work, I just only, I only mentioned that because Elish Norn Mother of Machines is out there, and if your opponent has that, it will not draw you a card upon entering. Might still be worth running out for that static, but just be aware of that. That said, if you're running Elish Norn Mother of Machines or any other Panharmonicon style effect, you draw two cards when the, you get a Divination plus a Hating on Planeswalkers? Sick. Like, that's just straight up amazing, frankly. Um, but I, I, the, it's, it has everything I look for. Like usually hosers like this, you have to spend a card in order to pin down even like one of your opponent's planeswalkers. Like right now, Pithing Needle is sideboard tech against planeswalker heavy decks because you can name a specific walker and just shut it down. I know I've named Eternal Wanderer on Pithing Needles blind, like not seeing it in my opponent's hand, but they kept mana open and I'm about to attack. I'll just throw out a Pithing Needle, name the Wandering Emperor 
and then swing. And I've had opponents who then followed up by casting the Wandering Ember, either not realizing that it will have no effect, or just to show me, yep, you got me. Um, which, uh, you know, I respect that. I think that's kind of neat. But, uh, yeah, like, I've used it in those kind of situations. Spark Rupture would do something very, very similarly, and it does it on a more just blanket level. Like, there are certain control decks that are going to hate seeing this hate seeing it if they drop it to fairy temporal pilgrim and, and you just drop this it's like cool four four cool five five bro good work like what are you gonna do with it you know it's not going to overrun me the way you want it to and i think that's rad uh yeah and it's all abilities the planeswalkers lose all of their loyalty abilities and all their passive abilities so if you're doing some kind of like narset combo shenanigans guess what too bad like i'm i can draw cards again and you can deal with it <laughs> like um i love that I think that's absolutely fantastic. Actually, funnily enough, I think with the way state-based actions and everything would line up, if your opponent has a Narset down and you throw a Spark Rupture, it would enter the battlefield. The draw trigger would go on the stack. Narset's passive would no, would be... A, part, Narset would lose her passive, and then you would draw. Then the, the trigger would resolve, so you would draw your card. Uh, I love that. I think that's super cool. So this shuts down Narset Parter Veils in a really cool way that I adore. However, flip side, Narset Parter Veils is a three mana, five loyalty walker. If you don't activate her right away, you have a five loyalty walker sitting around. Well, Spark Rupture does turn her into a five five. So all of a sudden, she just transforms into this like crazy card uh, card draw engine that also shuts down your opponent's card draw that is just threatening some kind of wheel situation. We've all seen that. But it, it converts her from that into just a beat stick that can just be flying at you next turn if you don't have a way to deal with it. So that's legit. Uh, I love this. I think this, this card is very, very cool. There's also one situation in which you might seriously consider running uh, Spark Rupture and Planeswalkers in the same deck. And that situation would be with Luxior, Giada's Gift. So if you have Luxior equipped to a Planeswalker, it stops being a Planeswalker, but it retains its abilities. Then as far as Spark Rupture, Rupture is concerned, it wouldn't see it as a planeswalker anymore. So even though you have loyalty counters on this planeswalker, because you know Spark Rupture just says each planeswalker with one or more loyalty counters on it loses all abilities and is a creature with power, blah blah blah. It no longer sees the equipped creature as a planeswalker. It just doesn't count it, so it's unaffected by this. And as a result, if you have a Luxior equipped planeswalker, you don't get the power and toughness, like the, the base power and toughness from the loyalty counters, but yeah, Luxior gives you that anyway, so whatever. Um, but you also get to retain your loyalty abilities. So if you have a walker that has a Luxior on it, and then you throw a Spark Rupture, you get to be the only one who has a walker online. That's pretty dope. <laughs> like, I like that a lot, as a matter of fact. Um, yeah. And on top of that, once if you were to equip Luxior to another Planeswalker, so let's say you have, you know... Uh, I don't know, a Jace Perfected Mind or something, just sitting around. I don't know why I keep, I'm finding different Planeswalker examples, but okay, you got, you got a Jace just chilling, being Jace, and you really want to just down ticket it to, to blast your opponent, but right now, he's just a 4-4 four, four with no abilities. Well, you could pay 3 to use Luxior's Equip a Creature ability to move Luxior onto Jace, at which time Jace will cease being a Planeswalker and Spark Rupture will no longer affect Jace. It will then become... The planeswalker, it'll re retain, or sorry, it will become the creature that has its abilities that is not affected by spark rupture anymore. And so then you can start activating its loyalty abilities again. So if you have Luxio around and, an, and a lot of mana, you can activate one walker, pay three, move it to the next walker. Or no, you, you would still only pay one because the, the walkers, uh, I need to pull this up now, I believe Luxio reads, um, Luxior Jazz Gift, equip Planeswalker 1 or equip 3. So never mind, I was mistaken. You don't have to use the equip 3 here because um, Spark Rupture does not stop them from being Planeswalkers. Uh, Luxior prevents them from being Planeswalkers, uh, but Spark Rupture does not. So you would still have a Planeswalker, you could equip uh, Luxior for 1. Honestly, Luxior Spark Rupture is a combo that I am 
absolutely going to do. If you want to see me brew around this after it's released, uh, twitch.tv slash handbox42, I'm definitely gonna be working on it um, because I think that combo could be incredible. Like an Esper Planeswalkers list with a lot of targeted creature removal or Planeswalkers that can remove creatures um, alongside Spark Rupture. So you throw this down, your opponent's Planeswalkers just don't do anything and you just keep moving Luxio around to activate all your walkers and they grow as creatures that can then be attacking your opponent to kill them. Seems pretty good to me. <laughs> um, so you have Raska, uh, Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim, all those cards that draw you, uh, Kaito, they draw you cards, give you a benefit in combat, remove your opponent's things. All of those kinds of effects could be very, very, very strong with that particular combo. Now note, in order to do that, you need Luxior. Luxior, gives you your abilities back in this combo effectively um that's great so just putting that out there thank you so much for checking out this edition of the overthinking mtg podcast available on youtube and anywhere podcasts are sold so um also if you're listening to this and magic on minneapolis is still going on definitely find me i'm going to be in the command zone a lot of the time just kind of wandering the floor rubbing elbows shaking hands fist bumping all that happy jazz so Definitely find me. If not, keep an eye on my Twitter um, for other for future events and whatnot. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to MagicJank.com, the uh, the primary sponsor of this channel. It is a marketplace where you can buy and sell Magic the Gathering products, gear. If you have like, let's say example, you have like fun T-shirts and hats that are themed around Magic the Gathering. You can sell them on Magic Jank. You are not limited to just singles and sealed products. So check it out. We love to have you. And also, just kind of browse our wares while we're there. There's a link in the description below. I'd love to see it. Anyway, thank you so much. I hope you're having a phenomenal day. And I'll catch you on the next one.